When the women, when the women were taken to Exeter to face trial, what went with them, of course, were the written statements. One thing I hadn't really spotted when I wrote the book was how, in fact, the statements were all really by their enemies. They were all hearsay. There's not a single verbatim or any kind of statement made by Temperance Lloyd or Susanna Edwards or Mary Trembles. It's all what people claim to have heard them say. People like Thomas Eastchurch, curiously, a non-conformist. He was a wealthy man. His wife was fine for attending conventicles, in other words, not going to the Anglican place of worship. His daughter claimed to be ill. She was one of the people who was accusing uh, Temperance Lloyd of bewitching her, making her have stomach pains. So, but Thomas Eastchurch, in a way, colluded with people like John Hill. He accused um, Temperance Lloyd. He claimed to have spent the Sunday when Temperance Lloyd was in the lockup at Biddeford Bridge, listening to her statement, and he gives a very detailed account of Temperance Lloyd's confessions. And the confessions include stuff which to us nowadays, 350 years later, are absolutely weird. You know, it's all Freudian sexual fantasy, we'd call it. You know, he claimed that Temperance Lloyd had been sucked in her private parts by this strange black small creature. It's all odd. This was accepted as truth and accepted as evidence, even though Temperance Lloyd herself had played no real part in presenting this evidence.